Well, hello. So, I upset a couple of people again. I seem to have a good knack of doing that. And uh, and I figure that, all right, I'll do a video. I'll do one more video regarding this two pound coin and, uh, and then that's it. And if there's any more comments to come in the future, I'll keep this, the link for this video, say in the newsletter or something. And if there's any more comments in the future about uh, the Royal Navy two pound coin, then they can come onto this video. And on this video, uh, on YouTube, on the comments section, I'll answer them. Um, that's not me being arrogant, by the way, but if I'm gonna do a video specifically for it, and I'm gonna take the time out of my day to do a video specifically for it, then if I start getting conversations and dialogue on this subject, and I've already covered it, I'm not gonna fancy taking even more time to sit and write and write and write and write replies, um, because I've already covered it. And once I've covered it, I've, the, the, that's my stance. This is, this, is, this is what I think about it, this is what I feel about it, and nothing's gonna move me from that. And if that offends anybody, I'm sorry, you know. Um, if, you're, if your opinion is different to mine, as a couple of people's are, I'm not going to uh, remove you. I'm not going to delete your comment. I'll only, I have a line, and that's my line. I choose the line. And if somebody oversteps that line, then I'll delete the comment. If somebody continues overstepping the line, then I will throw them off and block them. Um, because this is my channel, and, and I don't want unpleasantness on my channel so I think I have the right for that um, however the way the dialogue's been going at the moment is uh, a little bit of it has got near the knuckle but that's why I'm, I'm doing this video because I don't want to <coughs> I don't upset anybody and I don't want to get into a row and an argument um, and the one thing that I do know with over 20 years experience of the internet is that the minute you get into a debate or an argument via text there will be no winners because words in writing by text can have different connotations. You can write something by, write something, I will write something and mean one thing, someone else can read that and take it a completely different way. And that's all right when it comes to things like, I don't know, making the odd mistakes or things, looking at things a different way. But um, when it comes down to uh, important issues like this and people sort of pointing the finger, um, and, and argumentative then uh, or seriously debatable then I think well you're going down the road of the text is just a waste of time because someone's just going to get upset you know it ended up bothering me last night and I don't normally get bothered by messages but it bothered me a little bit last night and, and uh, took me an extra hour to go to sleep just couldn't get it out of my mind so first of all let's cover this uh, disrespectful thing um, and by the way, I'm only going to talk about this pretty much on this video. So if you're looking at any other advice, it's not going to be here. And if you've got no interest in this, then don't waste your time watching the video. Um, likewise, if you're the kind of person that thinks I talk out of my bottom and therefore most of what I talk about is rubbish or whatever, or you don't like it or you don't agree with it or whatever, then don't watch it. Save yourself some time. So... Onto this thing about the disrespecting the services and all of that, yeah. Um, let's just take that right away, okay? It's got nothing to do with me giving a voucher code. It's got nothing to do with whether I respect or disrespect the services. And it's got nothing to do with the wars and the conflicts. <clears throat> I've had, I was a, I was a, it comes to mind, I was a, a friend of mine, got married. And I was his, uh, I did the chauffeuring for him. I had a nice car at the time and I chauffeured him, took him to the hotel, one thing or another, made it look nice for him. He was in the services, he was in the Navy. And he was on one of them boats, ships, you know, who cares whether it's a boat or a ship. I don't care whether it's called the stern or the aft or the whatever. It makes no difference to me. I don't go on boats, so I don't care. From that perspective, not from a perspective of respect from the perspective of I don't care whether it's called a ship or a boat or a whatever, I don't care because I don't go on them. Even if I had 20 million pound and I went and bought a boat, I often talk about it and laugh about it. If I bought a boat, I would buy a boat, I would keep it in the harbour, I'd take it out of the harbour about 600 yards so that I can still see the beach because I don't want to be anywhere I can't see land 
and I'll have my little get together and my little glass of wine and sit on my boat. Because if anything happens, I can jump in the water and swim to the land. If I can't see the land, I'm not getting on a boat. So that's it. So I don't care what they're called. No disrespect intended. <clears throat> so he was on one of them ships and he was on one of them ships that got attacked and bombed and blown up and he had to dive in a drink. Freezing cold water out there, apparently. I've never been. But I remember the stories that he told me. And um, for him, <coughs> horrifying. For him, oh my God. For me, it was like someone it could be, you could be telling me about a movie. I see people getting blown up on a film, Steven Spielberg film, all that going on. I see it on the news. Nowadays, we're just accustomed to watching things getting blown up all over the place. We're not part of it. We're not there. We don't feel it. We don't experience it. <clears throat> he did. And I've never disrespected him once. Or his friends. Or the people that died. In any of the conflicts. I have a huge amount of respect for anybody, even, you know, whether they're getting paid wages or not, because there is a different uh, discussion about that. People go into the services, they know what they're going into, and they're getting paid a wage to go and do that. Yeah, get all that. At the same time, whether they're being paid or not, they're still prepared, these people, to stand up and walk in front of a bullet in that context. On behalf of us, me, you, everybody else. These people are prepared to do that. Now you could argue, well they get paid for it. On the other hand, you could very well argue they don't get paid enough. They, could get, they should get paid 10 times more if they're prepared to walk into a bullet. Completely different arguments and discussions and all that for another day. This is about whether I disrespect them or don't. No, I don't. I never went into the army, never went into the services. I don't disrespect them. I would give them all a free coin if I could but I can't so there is no disrespect whether I called out the HMS Belfast whether I called out the HMS Duck it doesn't make any difference it's a boat it's a boat on a two pound coin as far as I'm concerned and as much respect as I've got I just don't even want to go down the road of having this conversation really because as much as respect as I have for all of our personnel and the armed forces personnel of other countries that look after their own people as much respect as I have for them, and as much respect as I have for the people that we've lost, and the people that have died, in order to give us this country, and give us democracy, and allow me to do what I do, and allow you to do what you'll do, as much as respect as I have for all of those people, past, present, and those in the future, <clears throat> I do get sick and tired of commemorating war. If I've got a beef with any of that service, armed services industry, if you like, it is only the fact that I am a little bit tired of the constant commemoration of killing people, constant commemoration of death, whether it's our deaths, whether it's other people's deaths from other countries, someone's son, someone's daughter, someone's mum, someone's dad, they're getting killed left, right and centre. Do we really need to commemorate that? Are we really saying that there isn't enough decency in our entire history that we can commemorate stuff that isn't necessarily war, death, destruction, boom, <laughs> That's my only beef for that. So, I'm not that bothered half the time what the real names are we all call them what we call them and we don't mean any disrespect by it i call the magna carta the magna carta i call the king james bible the king james bible and so on i call brunel station brunel portrait or brunel the man i don't necessarily call them specifically what they're supposed to be called or what the royal mint calls them and for the purposes of my business i'm just a coin retailer in a sense I'm not, I'm not bothered, I don't care about the rights and wrongs of the services and the Union Jack and all of these different things. You know, we all have our own personal opinions. I personally think as a country, we've got a lot of shame in the stuff that we've done 
taking people from their countries, making slaves, doing all the things that we've done. But they're all different debates and they're nothing to do with coins. So I don't want to bring them into coins, thank you very much. You know, if you've got comments like that, please go and make those comments to the people that can make a difference. I can't make a difference to how you feel about a flag or the personnel, the services and all the rest. I can't make any kind of a difference. Someone else can. They're where you need to put those kind of comments. That deals with that. So no disrespects to you, no disrespects to them. It's, it, it's that. And what you get from me is like having a conversation. If you could sit here and have a cup of coffee, I would say the same thing. Now let's get on to the price of this coin. Um, people keep quoting prices at me. Oh, I've seen this one like just now with the conversation that's going on with uh, this other chap. Um, being very respectful, by the way, in, in, in your um, in your conversation. Um, you're throwing prices at me like three pound and six pound and nine pound. Like that's supposed to mean something, it means nothing. That's not the value of the coin. The value of the coin is the value of the coin. I can't do anything about that. They chose to make 650,000 ish. I can't do anything about that. What I did several years ago, a couple of three years ago, three or four years ago, what I did, the moment I worked, I knew what the mintage figure was of that coin, the Royal Navy two pound and the um, Britannia 2015. Once I knew what the mintage figures were for those coin, I then went and looked at, okay, what is a Royal, what is a Northern Ireland worth? A Northern Ireland's worth around about 50 quid. That's the price that I quote it. Yes, you can get it a bit cheaper, maybe 40 quid, whatever, but it's around about a 40, 50 quid mark for a Northern Ireland for 400 and however many thousand that was. So if you value the coin different to me, go and do your mathematics, you do your own and Look at the price of the value, the retail value. You're not looking, I don't care what an auction value is. I don't care that somebody's got a Northern Ireland and decided to sell it for 30 quid. That doesn't make the Northern Ireland worth 30 quid. That means that person decided to sell it for 30 quid. Doesn't make it worth 30 quid. Do you see? So it could still be worth more than what somebody's paying for it. So, people that put these prices, they're selling it because they're happy to sell it for that money. Person who sells a, a, a Royal Navy two pound coin for six quid, they're happy to get six quid for it. Who am I to say that they're wrong? I'm not saying they're wrong. If they want to charge six quid for it and get six quid, good luck to them. You know, if, if, somebody, if somebody comes along a couple of these jumpers, they're a hundred pounds each, these jumpers and I won't pay £100, just like there are people that won't give me 25 quid for a Royal Navy. That's fine. That's their price. That's their value. I might see it for 50 quid, 60 quid, I'll buy one. But I ain't going to buy it for 100 Now, as I said, all things being relative, if my wages were double, I wouldn't care. I'd just buy it for 100 because I've got extra disposable income. So there is that that factors into it. And there's also factors into it of what it's worth on the day, there and then, when somebody's looking. So if... Uh, if somebody picks up a Q Gardens 50p for £27.50 in auction and it turns out to be a real Q Gardens 50p, that doesn't mean the value of the 50p has just gone plummeting. It means that that person has had it off. That person has had a right result because today, when they looked, they got it at that price. Lucky them. Excuse me. But it doesn't mean it's worth less. Now, the, raw, the uh, Northern Ireland was, what was it, 450,000, 400 and some odd thousand. The Royal Navy, the HMS, uh, the, the, not HMS, the Britannia 2015, both 650,000. So do your own maths, do your own mathematics, work out what you think, what you think the retail price is of a Northern Ireland. Don't go by mine. Get a bit of paper and a pen and you have a little search around and decide in your own mind, right, I've had a little look, I've seen the cheapest, I've seen the dearest, I think the retail price for a Northern Ireland two pound coin is this much money. You put that much money, you decide how much you think the retail price is worth based on, and this is how you base the retail price, you base it on, if you wanna look on eBay, you look on eBay, you look at buy it now only, you do not look for people that have just got one coin because they're selling one coin that's not what it's you're looking for a retailer 
someone that's got five, 10, 20 of them. That's what you're looking for. That will give you a better idea of what the retail value is. And they're selling them. That will give you the better idea of a retail value. A few people selling it a bit cheaper makes no difference whatsoever. Once you've decided how much you think that Northern Ireland should be, write it down on your bit of paper. Now do your own mathematics and work out if that's that price at 450,000, what would the price be on 650,000? And then factor into that, of course, your, your Wales and your England because of the prices that they're selling for, because now you've got to go between the two. So you can't say that the Wales is X price and even though they made less Navy and Britannia these two must be cheaper if they made less than that for example then they're going to be worth more than that so that gives you a base these are the baselines that you've got you've got the baselines of the coins that are already out there they've already been done they've already been minted they've already been around for years now I, I just, what I do is I will look at it, I'll do my own mathematics, I'm a, I'm a buyer and a seller and I've been doing it all my life and I understand supply and demand a lot better than a lot, than a lot of other people. Some people's forte is not understanding supply and demand. Someone else's forte, one of my children or two of my children are uh, fully, um, fully, uh, oh, I forget the word now, mechanics anyway. Um, uh, not mechanics, uh, electricians, you know. I didn't have any of that kind of in my head. To do anything like that, someone else's forte might be in something else. Your forte is in whatever is in your forte, whatever you're reasonable at, you know. And, and, and mine has been in uh, buying and selling and supply and demand all my life as it happens. So I understand it and I understand that when, when there are Someone can make a thousand of something and have a limited edition of a thousand of those items and nobody cares. So what? So you've only made a thousand. So they're all numbered. So it's a limited edition. So? Means nothing. <coughs> Unless that item is already collectible. It's already a collectible-ish type of item that people buy and you're just making a different one and you're now going to say there's a hundred thousand or there's a thousand of those available and number them all, suddenly people are interested, suddenly people do care because you're making a collectible item anyway, you're making something that people will want. And so in the case of these coins, <coughs> the, the government are making them and they're putting them out there. And Oh, I struggle sometimes with how to sort of explain things. Like, there are coin collectors all over the world. You and I know, right, we can agree on that, can't we? There are coin collectors all over the world. From Zimbabwe to Australia to America, everywhere, right? And these people, some of these coin collectors collect UK coins. They'll want that Royal Navy coin, but they can't get the Royal Navy coin because they can't come here and just go and do a bit of shopping and change up 10 or 20 quid like you can. So you can go out to the shops when a coin like that, even though it's rare, it's new, and because it's brand new, it's on the market, it's flooded, because we all get it in our change everywhere, it's, it's everywhere. Even though there's only 650,000, in 2016, those coins were everywhere. You couldn't go and get a bag of coins and not find them. Hence, I put them all away and I told everybody to do the same. So these people that live around the world, they can't do that. Pardon me. But you can, and it's a rare coin. You can now sell that coin for 10, 20, 25 quid to people around the world. They will be glad to pay it because it's a rare coin. And also because to pay 25 quid for that coin is a lot cheaper than they can possibly get it. They can't jump on a plane, get on a boat, come over for less than 25 quid and go and get themselves a Royal Navy coin. It's so like when people say to me about selling banknotes, they call me a crook. Oh, anybody can go in and get one. No, they can't. Only 70 million people in the world can just walk in the bank and get a £10 note. Only 70 million or 80 million people in the world, in the entire world, can walk into a bank, get some £2 coins 
and look at them. Only 70 to 80 million. That's all of you. you can walk into a bank anytime, get 500 quid's worth of two pound coins, sit and search for them and you'll find a Royal Navy and you'll find a Britannia. Straight away, in your first bag. You can do that. <coughs> There's another seven billion people that can't do that and I'm not being condescending and I'm not talking to you like a child I'm just trying to get you to go oh I didn't look at it like that you all you have to do is walk out of your front door to the nearest shop change a 20 pound note buy something for 50p and you've got a five pound note so if you wanted a poly my five pound note just to put in your collection, no value, just to put in your collection, you just want one, because you collect notes, all you've got to do is go down in the closest shop to your house, right now, with a 10 or a 20 pound note, buy something at 50p, get a five pound note and you change. Job done. 70, 80 million of you can do that, like that. Seven billion people cannot do that. They cannot, just go and get one. So they might have to pay 20 quid, 25 quid including delivery, because somebody might not want to send it through the post abroad to Russia or Estonia without sending it signed for delivery. There's another seven, eight, nine quid on top of the price. So now you've sold that five pound note for like, you've sold it for 15 quid, plus the postage, you're getting 20, 25 quid for it. And you think that's crazy, that's ridiculous, you're a crook. No, you're not, just dissect it down. Understand it, understand how the supply and demand works and understand that there's more people than you that want something. You know, ephemera, bus tickets, worth money. You go and you get on a bus, you don't do it anymore, but you used to, go and get on a bus, you get a bus ticket. A million bus tickets a day they make, you throw the bus ticket away, everybody, a million people throw the bus tickets away, probably except 20 people who might go home and put that in the drawer. Those bus tickets are worth money. A bus ticket from when I was at school is worth five, ten quid now. Bus ticket for a tuppence, it's worth five, ten quid. It's ephemera. Anything that you throw away is ephemera. Printed in the millions, thrown away. Leaflets. You know, some, some of you might remember Melinda Messenger, the lady with the big boobies, years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it was. But she became famous, and before she became famous, she became famous because she was on a leaflet advertising a shower company. That's how she started and then it was picked up from there. Anyway, I digress. The whole point is, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the supply and demand side of it. So, last effort, okay? I drink Jack Daniel's honey. It's the only spirit I can drink neat. Love it. I also drink whiskey, whiskey and Coke. And I'll buy Grant's, Bell's, Teacher's, Teachers, Grants, Bells, White and McKay, if I have to. Don't like the woody taste. And there's another one. Grouse. So there's about five bottles of scotch there. I like a bottle of scotch. And I like a drop of vodka. Now, this is a bottle of Bacardi. Because I ain't got no vodka. So pretend that says vodka. Just pretend that says vodka, right? And stick with me on this. Now, that is a bottle. 70 cl that is a litre bottle litre 70 cl a 70 cl bottle is a roundabout don't dissect me on this i'm saying roundabout it's around about 15 16 quid ish for a 70 cl bottle a litre bottle is around a 20 22 pound mark 20 pound ish give or take either way now if you go in a garage you're going to pay full retail price for a litre bottle. You're going to pay full retail price for one of these. If you go in Sainsbury's or Morrison's or Tesco's or the co-op at the right time when they have their offers on, you can pick a litre bottle up cheaper than you can actually buy a 70 CL bottle. You can see it on the shelf. The 70 CL bottle will be like 18.99. Special offer right next to it will be the litre bottles, 15 quid. 
right? Do you have a go at the retailers all over the place and go, why are you selling it for that? It's not worth it. It's not worth it because you can go to Tesco's and get that for 20, for 15 quid. So it's not worth it. Really? If it's not worth it, why do they sell tens of thousands of these every day at the full price? If it's not worth it. My honey, Jack Daniels honey, and Jack Daniels, the normal Jack Daniels, I like that a bit, a bit of Coke, but this one I like neat. Now both of these, about the same price. Both of these retail at about 30 quid for a litre bottle. I don't like paying 30 quid for a litre bottle. I will never pay 30 quid for a litre bottle. But every now and again, you go into the supermarket, they'll have a special and they'll do it for 20 quid for a litre bottle. Now they sell a 70 CL bottle for 20 quid for Jack Daniels. But every now and again, you get a litre bottle for 20 quid. So do you have a go at the manufacturers and the garages? Because a garage will never sell you a bottle of this for, for, for 20 quid. Never. Corner shop, you'll never get a bottle of this for 20 quid. You go in a corner shop, you go in a garage, you go in a lot of off-licenses, wherever, you're going to be looking at around £30 for a litre bottle of this. But every now and again, you get it in the supermarket for 20. I don't see any demonstrations going on with people up in arms going, it's not worth... 30 quid, um, they sell tens of thousands of these every single day at 30 quid. So when I see it for 20 quid, I don't have the ump and think, oh, they're crooks. I go, I see it for 20 quid, I think, touch, I'll have two or three. They'll last me six months. That's what I do. I, I'm grateful for the fact that I've seen it cheaper and so I go and buy it cheaper. And then I'll use it as and when, put it, back, put it away. I'm happy I've saved 10 pound a bottle. Do you see? So now the other comment about uh, when I said, I don't see anybody else putting their head above the parapet and uh, making these predictions and, and uh, coming back at me with, yeah, there are other people. No, there ain't. There ain't anybody. If there is, give me the link. Put the link in, please, in a comment and give me the link. Give me the link to where someone else is doing a video, working out the value of a coin and saying, this is what I value that Royal Navy two pound coin to be. I value it at this and I have a load of stock and I'm selling it at the price I value it at. Please show me a link of someone else that's doing that. Because from what I can see, I'm one of the only people that's putting my head above the parapet so you can shoot it off. Oh, I don't know what he's saying, bang. Oh, I think you're wrong there, bang. Or oh, you've upset me and you're disrespectful, bang. I'm sticking my head above the parapet going, look, this is what I think. And you watch my videos only because you're interested in what I think. I'm not a guru, I'm not a celebrity. One of my children, he's got 50,000. He'll put a video up and he'll get 50,000 hits like that. That's a following, you know. One of these stars and celebrities that you get, whoever that might be, they put a post up, it's seen by a million people. That's what you call a following. That's not me. I'm normal. That's not me. I've got a little following. We've got something like 700 subscribers. We've got something like 10,000 customers. And we've got something like 1,500 customers that virtually open every email. So, I know that what I've got to say has an interest to some of those people, but I also know that other people are going to come along and they're going to go, I don't like that. Well, that's fine. You don't have to, you know. But if you're, if you're going to go down this road, then let's go down this road and support it. I support, with factual evidence, as much as I can, everything that I say. And when I make a prediction, I'm making a prediction based on my years of knowledge of supply and demand and buying and selling. I've had to learn that. So that when I do a deal with somebody and I buy 500 towels for a pound each, I have to think in my mind, I can sell them for three or four pound each. Because it would be really silly for me to go and buy 500 towels at a pound each and then struggle to sell them for one pound 50. Who ties their money up to make 
a few bits of shrapnel. You've got to know that when you buy that item, you've got to know in your mind the value of it. You've got to know what it's worth. You've got to know what you can sell it for. And I've spent my entire life doing that. And I'm pretty good at it. I am pretty good at it. And I don't mean to sound big-headed, and I'm sorry, and I don't mean that to sound reaching. I am pretty good at it. I could take anything. I could come into any one of you's house, any one of you, and I could look at stuff around and I could price it. Not everything, but there's an awful lot of stuff that I've dealt with in my entire life. I could just walk in and go, that's worth 50 quid. That's worth 30 quid. And some of the things I could give prices for, you'd go, really? But yeah. You know, you buy a punch magazine. You buy the magazine for like 10 or 15 quid, but you can sell 50 pages of it at 15 and 20 quid each. How does that compute? But it's real, it works, I've done it, I know. And most of the stuff I talk about is because I've learned, I've learned the hard way and I've learned. I've bought stuff where I've caught a cold on it and I've had to sell it for less than I've bought it for. You do that a few times, you soon, you soon get to work out your mistakes and get to learn by those mistakes. You don't want to keep going out, you know, being the person who buys a warehouse full of op pants when op pants just dropped out of the market and became unfashionable. Who wants to be that person? And, and every time you make a mistake when you're buying and selling over the years, it costs money. When, for example, like I would say you're normal, as in you have a normal job, most people, most people are more normal, have a normal job. That's how I was always told when I was, get a normal job, but you know, working for yourself isn't normal. So people that work for themselves, over the years you learn a phenomenal amount about what you work and deal in. And you live it every day. Well, I've lived buying and selling every day for 50 odd years, 50 years, since I was six and I'm 56. So for 50 years now I've been doing it. Sold my first item at six, it was a fish. Probably told you that before, but yeah. I went, I don't know why I did it. I went and, I went and bought a fish, then I got home and I realized I hadn't got anything to put the fish in. So uh, I thought, what am I gonna do with this fish? And I sat on the garden wall, contemplating it. And then I saw people walking past, this lady came past with her shopping. And I said, do you wanna buy fish? And she said, if you help me home with my shopping, I'll buy your fish. That was a good lesson. So when I went back again after doing that, I didn't go and get another fish. I went to get another fish, and then I remembered halfway through, why bother? Circumvent that. So I just sat on the wall and I offered people to help with their shopping. And that was at six years old. I've been doing it for 50 years. That's not to be big-headed. I've been doing it for 50 years. So, so I've got to understand a lot about supply and demand and buying and selling and making a profit. And if I was earning four, five, six, seven, eight hundred pound a week wages, and I was finding Royal Navy two pound coins in my pop, in my change, I can't be asked. I'd probably sell them for five or ten pound each. I'd just be happy to make a few quid. But I'm not. I am someone who does it for a living, and I take my living really, really seriously. It's my living. It's my wages. It's going to be my living for the next ten years. Really seriously, I take it. So, you know, and it's so easy. I have to throw into this. I know the time is dragging on, but bloody hell. I also have to put into this about the supply and demand. There's also a fine line between if you get big enough, like I wouldn't say that we're big enough, but we're getting close there. So when I say to some of my customers on a video like now, my valuation on, a, on the Royal Navy two pound coin is 25 pound plus. I actually think it's worth more than 25 quid. I think it's worth probably about 30 quid now. But my value on that, 25 quid plus. And you go and some of my customers go and see it for sale for six quid. There are people that watch my videos that will go out and they'll buy it at six quid just because of what I've said. I'm going to buy that because of what Ian said. Now, someone else standing over there has the right to then stand up and go, you shyster you're manipulating the market because if you hadn't have said what you said that person wouldn't have gone out and bought that coin do you look at it even that way because if i don't say anything some of you don't go onto ebay because i often say to you don't i if you can buy the coin that i say is worth you buying cheaper than what i'm selling it go and buy it and i know that you do so you're going off and you're buying these things based on what i'm telling you 
So that, in a way, is a manipulation of the market. Tiny, tiny. What we've done is we've, gone, we've given those sellers a few sales. Boom, 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 boom. However, and this is not slagging off change checker, we bought out a mintage guide, change checker bought out a scarcity index. I believe that their scarcity index is wrong because they quite simply ignore 29 Olympic coins. They're English coins. They're commemorative coins. You can't ignore them. If you're going to ignore them, you, then you might as well say, well, we'll ignore the 2002 uh, Commonwealth Games ones then, because they're games. They don't count. 29 Olympic coins. They don't count. Psh, put them over there. So, because they did that, and I just believe, I'm not saying that they did it on purpose. I'm not saying that they did it for, for monetary gain or negative gain or anything like that. I just think it's a mistake. And it's a mistake I would love to talk to them about one day, hopefully soon. And, um, and help get rectified because I believe it is a heavy duty mistake. You cannot take a section of the coin and disregard it. You're either doing a, a guide, a mintage guide, a valuation on the UK coins for the UK coin market. So, yes, you, you don't count Channel Islands and Isle of Man and Falkland and all the rest of it. They have to be separate. You have to go by what they produce for this country, for the circulation. So that would be England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and wherever else our money might go. OK, so... Um, I lost my train of thought now and I've tried to do all this in one go so um, I might even have to stop the video just to catch up with my train of thought oh yeah the Commonwealth Games so you can't you can't just go we'll put them four out of the way they don't count because if you do that if you do the same as you've done with the 50p's and do that then what you're saying is they don't count so the rarest coin becomes the Royal Navy and the Britannia because that's what happened with the scarcity index. They took away 29 coins and then said, so the third, fourth or fifth, I can't remember what the numbers now, um, but third, fourth, fifth rarest coins, for example, are the vote, suffragette and WWF. No, they're not, because they're over 3 million. They're not rare at all. They're not number three, number four. But because the scarcity index takes away 29 coins, woof, we won't talk about those. So because we ignore those, or they ignore those, their own index then makes the vote and the WWF number three, four or five. When in actual fact, the real rarity of them is in the 30s. Because every single one of the Olympic coins, every single one, even the coins that people don't want, all of those Olympic coins, every single one is rarer than a WWF or a vote or just about everyone, there might be one that isn't, but just about everyone is rarer than those two coins. So, and this is, this is important, I say this, so when they did that, and they did that with the scarcity index, and they published the scarcity index, the sales of the suffragette and the WWF went wallop, like that. And when I say wallop, I mean Every day, dozens, 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 people buying 10, 20, people buying 5, people buying 10, because Change Checker said so. Change Checker said it's the third, fourth, rarest coin. So I'm buying 10, I'm buying 5, I'm buying 2, I'm buying 6, I'm buying 10. We were selling, oh my God, it cleared us out completely. Cleared us out. I didn't want that to happen. I liked being able to have WWF in stock and the vote in stock all of the time. I liked being a seller that had that coin in stock all of the time. And all of a sudden, I'm selling out at a rate of knots that you cannot believe. And I can't understand why I'm selling them out. All I can do is just keep putting the price up. And even though I kept putting the price up at that time, they kept selling. They didn't stop selling. Sell. Boom, boom, boom. And fives, tens, fives, tens. I, the price started at 2.95. I put the price up to 7.95 before it started slowing down. Boom, 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 boom. Now you might go, oh, you had it off. Well, in a way, but it meant it cleared us out and it meant that we were right out and didn't have any. And I didn't like that. And I didn't like the way it was done. 
Now, there is an argument to be had, a debate to be had, whether or not you can disregard 29 Olympic coins. I don't think you can disregard any coin that's minted for circulation in this country, full stop. My battery's dying, that's what happened there. So, you know, full stop. I don't think you can do that. Um, so there you are. So I hope, I hope that I've totally, totally uh, explained it all about um, the Royal Navy £2 coin and its equivalent, the Britannia. And the Britannia is a much easier coin for you to find in your change because not as many people take it out as they do the Royal Navy one. But they're both coins that are 650,000. They're both coins that have a value. Their value is a minimum of 25 quid each. If you can find them for five pound each or seven pound each, you are having it off. You are having a field day. You are winning. Brilliant. But that is what they're worth. And remember, any time you think, is that coin really worth or going to be worth what Ian says it's worth, remember this. I only say a coin is worth what it's worth now at the price I sell it for. So if I say a coin is worth 25 quid, I've sold it for that and I've sold quite a few of them. I don't just say it's worth 25 quid. I tell you what I sold it for. I'm being honest. I'll tell you what I sell it for. How many people would do that? How many people would let you know that they were lucky enough to buy loads of four pound items and sell them for 25 quid? But I did. And another thing, even though I valued it at 25 quid, I still took 100 aside, if you remember, ages and ages ago, I took 100 aside and said, I value these at 25 quid, but you can have them for 15 quid each, there's 100 of them. And I put 100 aside at 15 quid each. And there's still some available now. So, um, so when you're quoting a figure of 16 pound at me that someone else has sold it for, well, they sold it dearer than I'm selling that one for. Or did you not know that one was there? Because it is there. And I put that out in a video at one point and said, and, and if you want that, it's in the Fantastic Investments. There's a link there for Fantastic Investments. And I have prices on certain coins that are even better than the values that I gave on the coins. Now, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. You're entitled to not agree with me and you're more than entitled to write and say that you don't agree. And I may or may not answer depending uh, on whether I feel I've covered the question. If I feel I've already covered it in a video, what's the? why would I need to just take another 20 minutes to write a, a, a reply and that's not being rude? It's not being condescending or anything like that. Um, so there we go <clears throat> if you don't agree with it that's fine you don't have to agree with it um, if you're interested in my predictions well you know then that's good and uh, and if you if you think I know what I'm talking about and you go and find a Royal Navy pardon me a Royal Navy coin for less money than I'm selling it for as I always say Go and snap the round off because it'll be a nice little investment for you. Because there's only 650,000 of each in circulation and there's only so many of them can come out. Where well, there isn't 650,000 of each in circulation, actually, I can guarantee you that there is less than, than 649,000 of each in circulation because I've got a 1,000 of each. Because I've been collecting them for four years. And every time I saw them, I collected them and collected them and collected them and I told people to do the same. Now I've saved a thousand of each coin. So do you want to call me a crook for that or do you want to call me a little bit shrewd for that and a little bit ahead of the game for that? I like to think I'm ahead of the game. I'm a little bit shrewd. I was a little bit clever. I worked out what they were worth. I looked at the mintage figure and I decided I was going to put a lot of store in that coin, those two coins. And if I ever got them offered to me cheap enough, I would take them. Now, if you want to sell your... Britannias and your Royal Navies for a fiver each, I'll buy them. I'll buy them all day long. So any of you that want to find them and not even bother selling them and just sell them to me for a fiver each, I'll buy them. No problem. Because I know what they're worth. And if you want to take that advice, great. If you don't want to take that advice, that's fine. I don't force anyone to take my advice. It is a free country and we have got free speech and all the rest of it. Um, I do thank you for watching the videos. I do thank you though for, even if you don't agree with me, taking the time up I, I i i don't even get the time to do what you do and and answer people and message people and stuff like that i don't get the time to do that so i am grateful that you've taken time out of your busy schedule out of your life to even put that comment whether you agree with me or not and thank you for watching the videos and um and i hope this puts to bed completely and utterly the whole 
Royal Navy two pound and the Britannia 2015 issue and also the respect for the issue because I do respect all of our personnel, any personnel that see this, be safe. No matter what country you're from, be safe.